should be in forever. What you said is what you do. You never change, you never fail. You are faithful to the end. I worship you, I worship you. I worship you. You are too committed to leave me. Oh, Jesus, you are too consistent to leave me halfway. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize that you are too faithful to fail me. You are too committed to leave me. Oh, Jesus, you are too consistent to leave me halfway. You've proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize that you are too faithful to fail me. Just begin to appreciate God. Begin to give Him all the praise. Begin to give Him all the glory. He is worthy to be praised and to be adored forever. What it begins, it will conclude. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the glory that was set before Him, despite the shame, and you the cross. Kilima to Zankiala de Gay in Nani Nakiala Gay de Gay. Again, again, de Gay. Vera, you're welcome. Vivian, you're welcome. Nonsu, you're welcome. Astro, Mrs. Joy Ajiti, my number one in law. You're welcome. Love you plenty. Vivian, you're welcome on this platform. I miss you guys. I miss you more, I miss you much more. Que l'ambra aso calibra to kaye de grea. Share it on your YouTube, uh, on, your, on your Facebook page. Start a watch party. Invite as much as you can on this platform here. Yeah? Captain Pam, you're welcome. Warrior, you're welcome. Invite as much as you can. We'll be starting in about 10 minutes. I just want to make sure we have a sufficient audience. First Lady, you're welcome. Pastor Francis, you're welcome, sir. Hey, the general, you're welcome, sir. Elambra, Sokia, Nukei, Labra, Sotaya. Just appreciate God with me and celebrate Him. He lives forever. He lives forever. He lives forever. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Most high, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Oh, most high, yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are more. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, yes you, you are, are the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are most high. Thank you, Jesus. Mr. Bimbola, I see you. Brother Light on Victor Nanobi. I love you, sir. Now, welcome on, on here. Saint of Ziba, you're welcome. Simeon, you're welcome. And Limo, Kotuz, Atilia, but I just worship God in the spirit with me. Just tell him how much you love him. Just appreciate him because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. He said, They that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Surely He will deliver me. Just appreciate this God that has been your shield, your buckler. Just appreciate this God that has been your sufficiency. Appreciate this God that has been your everything. I appreciate this God that has been your shield, your glory, and the lifter of your head. Hallelujah. I appreciate the one that was and is and is to come. I appreciate the God of all flesh with him there shall be nothing too hard for him to do. Bless the name of the Lord. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him he is a faithful father. That song writer says, He is a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. Your God is a good, good God. Celebrate this God. Age to age is still the same. From east to west is God. In Toronto, Canada, to America, all the way to Nigeria, is God all by himself, and besides him, there is no other. I appreciate him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his loving kindness. Thank him for his hand that is strong upon your life. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him that has made us victors and not victims. Lord, we celebrate you. Lord, we celebrate you. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. You are a good, good father. I confess that you are good. I confess that you are kind. I confess that besides you, there is no other. We celebrate you. Lord, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. Ageless God. Ageless grace. Ancient of days. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The rose of Sharon. The bright and morning star. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we say thank you. 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 You are too faithful to fail. Lord, we say thank you. You are constant, you are consistent. Lord, we say thank you. You are the one that knows the end from the beginning. Lord, we say thank you. Because when our mothers and fathers will forsake us, that's when you will pick us up. Lord, we say thank you. You are too much. You are too good. We celebrate you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name of worship, the Bible says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who hath redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord, those that God has preserved from calamity, those that God has preserved from, from corona, God, those that God has preserved from Ebola, those that have survived any ordeal. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say thank you. Why? Because he has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Those that have not been wasted by the noisome pestilence. On here, I would like you to say, Lord, I am grateful. Thank you. For preservation of my life, thank you for your faithfulness, thank you for your loving kindness, thank you for everything you have been doing. You have been a good, good God. I am careful to return in gratitude, I am careful to return in praise, I am careful to return in appreciation, I am careful to return in thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For preserving my life, for keeping my health, for preserving my loved ones, for, for everything you are doing, for your cover and your covering over every member of Powerhouse, for your cover and covering over their house and their household, for your cover and covering over everyone watching online here, yeah? for preserving every Christian. Lord, we are saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. To take you for granted is to be grounded. <laughs> Until we are grateful, we remain grateful. It is thanksgiving that makes our tongue to be full. So we are careful to say you are God. <laughs> you are the Lord over the storms. Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you for your mercy. 
Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your compassion that faileth not. Thank you because you are good and your mercies endure it forever. Thank you because with our hands we have not buried our children. Thank you because we have not wept over our husbands. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are careful to return all the gratitude to you. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you so, so much. Thank you from the depth of our heart as a people connected online. We say, Lord, we are grateful. Gratitude to you today. Gratitude to you today. Glory to you today. Elamu kozi aya nanunu. Egiriam prato zagia takia latu. In Jesus' name, we're giving thanks. Amen. Still in the spirit of thanksgiving, the Bible says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Until you have done His will, you are not entitled to the promise. The Bible recorded that thanksgiving is thanks living. A lot of people take thanksgiving for granted. In Matthew, Malachi chapter 2, verse 2, it said, Concerning the priest, that refuse to give glory to my name. He said, I will turn what they call a blessing into a cause. It is thanksgiving that produces thanksgiving. Until you are grateful for the little or for the finger of God, you cannot see his hand. Mm. Appreciation unto God is application for more. Yes, Let's say, Father, thank you for bread in my nostrils. The Bible says, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. It's not everything that has cars. Everyone that still has bread has a fighting chance. Everyone that is, that, that is still alive has hope. The Bible says to be joined with all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Therefore, that you are alive, be grateful. There is hope for your tomorrow. It's not over with you. God has not concluded your case. Lord, with all our hearts, we return in gratitude to you. Many, many thanks for your cover, for your covering, for your protection, for everything you've done and everything you are doing. We are careful to return all the gratitude to you. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you for keeping us during these times. Thank you for preserving our house. Thank you because we have not had news of war. Thank you. But we have not had a satanic call of emergency. It's not because we are smart that we are not plagued. It's because of your covering and your cover. Lord, thank you. Blessed be your name, O God. 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 For seeing eyes, for hearing ears, for walking legs, that I'm not a paralytic today, that I'm not dead or dying, that we are not in the hospital bed, that we are not living in squalor, that we are not begging for bread. That we are not in rags. Oh Lord, we are grateful. We are not better than those are in, are in deplorable situation. But your mercy has kept us. Your mercy has preserved us. And for your mercy, we say thank you. For your favor, we say thank you. For your faithfulness, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. For the salvation of our soul, for the wellness of our body, for your loving kindness and faithfulness. Lord, we are saying thank you. We refuse to take you for granted. We refuse to despise the many, many little things you are doing for us. We refuse to take it for granted. We refuse to be grounded. Lord, we celebrate you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name of giving thanks. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. We must return to prayers. We must return with humility. And we must return asking for mercy. No flesh can be justified in his presence. No one can boast in any righteousness. Our cover and our covering is in the blood. Let us humble ourselves before God as a nation, as a people, as the body of Christ, 
and say, Father, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me by the blood of your cross. I humble before you today. A leper to Ziggly Ambrose, or Tali Angry As, or Sally Agri H. Have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your faithfulness and loving kindness, purge my conscience from dead works. Let your blood speak for me. Have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. According to your faithfulness and loving kindness, cleanse me, purify me, purge me. Have mercy upon 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 me. In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to take the prayer of mercy seriously. No one is beyond the mercy of God. The Bible says two people were in the synagogue praying. One could not lift up his head but smote his chest and said, I am a sinner. But the other man who is a Pharisee or a Republican said that, look, I fast twice a week. I pay my tithe consistently, trying to justify and glorify himself in his presence. The Bible says the man that humbled himself returned justified. To go on your knees and ask for mercy is a sign of humility. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we lie, and the truth is not in us. I need you to humble before God and say, Lord, on behalf of the world, I cry for mercy. On behalf of my nation, Nigeria, I cry for mercy. On behalf of myself, Lord, I rise and have mercy. Have mercy. Let your blood speak once again. Your blood that is sufficient. Your blood that is enough. Let it cleanse. Let your blood sanctify. Let your blood wash. Let your blood and your sacrifice at Calvary, let it speak once again. Lord, arise in your, in your, in your mercy. Have mercy upon Nigeria. Have mercy upon America. Have mercy upon London, Europe. Have mercy upon all the nations that are experiencing the pestilence right now. Lord, we are asking for your mercy. Arise with all that makes you to be God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Purge, cleanse, purify. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy. He said, if my people that are called by my name, it is necessary for Christians to cry for mercy, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, I will hear. I will hear. He said, my ears are not too heavy. That he cannot hear, my hands are not shutting, that he cannot say. He said, But something has caused a separation. It is the same question. Lord, we return in humility over the leaders of our nations, over the atrocities in high places. We are here to say, Lord, arise with all that makes you to be God and have mercy upon us. 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 Cleanse us, purge us, purify us as a people. A labor to Ruani, Gariga, Logodo, Gazizi, a planta kill and bronze us or Giana, no, no. Mali angry. Hanuni mobere, oh, Hanuni mobere. Hanuni mobere, oh, Hanuni mobere. How we jarry, Kumasio. Hanuni mobere. Mercy, 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 mercy. What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. There's no other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 12, 11, that we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The early church understood the power in the blood. By the blood, they rebuked cancer. By the blood, they healed, cleansed lepers and healed all kinds of diseases. There is efficacy in the blood. Because the Bible made us to realize at Calvary, all the blood in his body was shed. 
Jesus did not return to heaven with his blood. He left it on earth for us to prevail in warfare. He resurrected flesh and bone. He did not resurrect flesh and blood. He left his blood here for us to do warfare. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. To provoke the blood of Jesus is to provoke the life of his flesh. When the blood begins to speak, demons tremble. The Bible says, turn ye to your stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. He said, today I will render to you double by the blood of the covenant. There is a blood called the blood of the covenant. When it begins to speak, the walls of Jericho crumbles. When it begins to speak, the devil, their boss, goes into hiding. We overcame him. The ultimate adversary of the devil by the blood is a defeated foe by the blood of his cross. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. There's healing in the blood. There's authority in the blood. There's life in the blood. So I need you right now to begin to plead the blood over your life, over your loved ones, over your spirit, soul, and body. I plead the blood of Jesus. Let your blood speak for me. Hallelujah. Let your blood avail for me. Let your blood fight for me. Let your blood preserve me. Let your blood keep me. Let your blood hide me in your tabernacle. Let your blood keep me by your blood. Rato zaga branto koko koko koko. Ezike to lambranto zagi ato kia la kria. By the blood I come. I provoke the power in the blood. Let your blood fight for me. Let your blood avail for me today. Let your blood bring me into your presence. Let your blood change my story. Let your blood sanctify. Let your blood prevail. Begin to plead the blood over yourself this morning. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your household. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus over your family. <laughs> Begin to provoke the power that is in the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says in the book of Exodus that Moses said unto them, Take Esau, dip it in the blood of the lamb, and smite your lintel and your post. He said, When the angel of death shall come, by that blood he will pass over. There's a mystery in the blood that preserves the saints from harm. A lot of us are believers, but we don't understand the covenant availabilities that God has provided for us. Amongst many others, the blood is a struggle. The blood is irresistible. The blood is God's last card. Imagine the blood of lambs preserving the entire nation of Israel. And no one died. No animal died. But in the other side, there was a lot of woe, a lot of cry, a lot of lamentation. How much more? The blood of the Son of God. Right now, I need you to begin to plead the blood over your lintel and your post by faith. The blood of Jesus over your life. The blood of Jesus over your children. The blood of Jesus over your household. I plead the blood. I plead the blood of his cross. I plead the blood that speaks a better thing than that of Abel. As the blood of Abel is crying vengeance, the blood of God is speaking mercy. Let your blood speak for me, O God. Let your blood avail for me. Let your blood wash. Let your blood fight for me. Let your blood preserve me. Let your blood preserve my household. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. 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 Blood of Jesus. Wash me. Blood of Jesus. Purge me. Blood of Jesus. Cleanse me. Blood of Jesus. Preserve my household. Preserve my children. Preserve my young ones. Preserve my spouse. Preserve Mokuka Tizambra Tokaya Nagria. Any believer, any of our love that work in the health sector, we ask that the blood will preserve them. We ask that the blood will keep them. We ask that the blood will sustain them. Elima Tutuka Yana Nunu Ezuka Limbrahanto Kiadia. We take covering in the blood. We take covering in the blood. We take covering in the blood. We take covering in the blood of his cross. We take covering in the blood. We take covering in the blood. We take covering in the blood. Let your blood speak. Let your blood avail. Let your blood cleanse. Et teko kanta zugaya, roprata kante zizuglia, rabraso sansa kiande gelebo, rason prate kelebo. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, do hands be joined with hands, the wicked will not go unpunished. The Bible says, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. I don't care if Corona is man-made or devil-made. I know that there's only one enemy, and that adversary is the devil. And the Bible says, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. The Bible says, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. I want you to open your mouth and begin to decree 
The wickedness of the wicked over the world comes to an end today. The wickedness of the wicked over my life comes to an end today. The wickedness of coronavirus and all kinds of diseases afflicting the world comes to an end today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I challenge the roots of the plague. I challenge the root of the virus. I decree the wickedness of the wicked comes to an end. I decree the wickedness of the wicked comes to an end today. I decree enough. 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 Ma take le bosch. Le zege de grianda ki and a gili branto zuzu. Rupranta kili ambrande gele grianda gele gele bosch. I declare enough. I declare enough. Let the blood speak. Let the blood fight. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Let the agenda of darkness be frustrated by the blood of his covenant. Begin to declare an end to the wickedness of the wicked. Begin to decree it. Begin to decree it. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest the righteous should put forth their hand into iniquity. You are special before God. There is a package for your preservation. There is an agenda to ensure that no evil knows your dwelling. Mm. So you will talk to God. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of my righteous. The rage of darkness shall not know my address. Begin to decree it. Listen, a king will rule and reign by decrees. You must be able to say what you want to see. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of my righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon my household. The Lord of the wicked, the Lord of the wicked shall not rest upon the body of believers in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I decree it shall not rest. 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 The Lord of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. The Lord of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. It shall not rest upon my household. It shall not rest upon any member of powers and the body of Christ at large. It shall not rest upon anyone watching me right now. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon your household. Somebody talk to God. Talk to God. The rod of the wicked shall not rest. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest the righteous should put forth their hand into iniquity. The rod of the wicked shall not rest. As the Lord live it. Maduga tike to zaza, rempanto kili ambra hansu susu, resanti lambra aka to kia, eke tiza ki anda zuzu zuzu, eze zeze ki anda kia la to ke, rambranto kali ambra hansu susu, e yi na ki anda gili ambra hansu sali, e gede gili ando zuzu, ma kuriante ke yi na nunu keli ambra hansu sisa kia, e gida gili ande ge, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. What we don't understand is that uh, everything demands worship. Honestly, what you worship determines what controls you. Corona everywhere. I've never seen status flooded more than it is flooded now. People are always talking about the disease. Nobody talks about the God that sits on the stone. What you don't want, you don't watch. What you don't resist has a right to remain. There is no irreversible case with God. The God we serve is more than enough. And that's why we must be careful not to give the attention that is meant to be given to God and give it to fear. You are going to talk to God. <laughs> Lord, I magnify and glorify you over every affliction. I magnify and glorify you over every disease. Lord, I magnify and glorify you over any plague. I decree you are still God over my life. You deserve all the worship. You deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the adoration. I glorify you over Corona. I glorify you over sickness and disease. I glorify you over HIV. I glorify you over cancer. I glorify you over every sickness ravaging my bones. You are God over my storms. You are God over my life. I glorify you over my life, over my situation. You are God. Ayina no naki ande zizi ge yaka la kriete zuzu. Rato tata prate kele gri ande gelebo. Rasa tata ki ande gelebo. Rasa in Jesus name we pray. The Bible says he make it war to cease. He make it war to cease. 
There is nothing God cannot do. It can go just like that by the authority of God. Because the Bible says God has power to raise a standard when the enemy comes like a flood. We are going to begin to declare, Oh Lord, make affliction to cease over my life, over my country, over the world at large. Oh Lord, cause war to cease. Make affliction to cease. Make the plague to cease. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, make war to cease. 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 Mado gaga. Brato koso koto kia. Raso so 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 kiri andegelebo. Make war to cease. In the name of Jesus. Make war to cease. Ato ta pranto za kiante kelebosh. Rato gelem brahanto zalina munu. Ege de gria koso so la kriate ke. Make war to cease. Make war to cease. Make war to cease, O God. Make war to cease. In the world over, make war to cease. 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 In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I humorously used to speak about the case of the Shunammite woman when she hosted and was hospitable to Elijah for a whole year. You know? And Elijah said, you have been careful with me because you have perceived I'm a holy man of God. He said, what do you want? I'm connected to the king and I'm connected to the captain, the general of the army. And the woman said, I'm sufficient. In other words, all that I'm doing to you, Elisha, is not to get anything back from you. I'm doing this to you because of God. There's nothing you really have that I need. Because that woman was barren and her husband was old. And she had a predicament that money could not solve. She had a predicament that doctors could not solve. No human connection could solve. But there is nothing God cannot solve. And Elijah said unto her, and Gehazi said unto Elijah, Ah, this woman is old. This woman is barren. And her husband is old. And Elijah said, Okay, you don't need anything physical, but I have things that money cannot buy. I have a grace that a human connection cannot solve. He said, In nine months' time, there's a bringing forth. And that changed her story forever. Listen carefully. The world of doctors right now is beyond them. The world of scientists are overwhelmed. What we are facing now compels us to look up. I was smiling when I read the account of Noah. The only place there was a window in that ark was in the third floor. So no matter the shaking of the floor, the only place Noah is permitted to look is up. I want you to look unto God right now and say, Oh Lord, arise. Oh Lord, arise. Steal the storm Steal the world storm. over in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, arise. Steal the storm world over. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise, speak peace. I, I want you to speak peace. Speak peace over the plague. Speak peace over the situation. Speak peace. Steal the storm, O oh God, with all that makes you to be God. Arise, 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 and steal the storm. Arise with all that makes you to be God. Egeti zakuta li ambra so zizi. E yina nunu keli ambra so siki li ande gele gesh. Rota ki ante kele brande gele gili ande gele 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 bosh. Rasota lambra toka le gili ande gele bosh. Arise and steal the storm, O God. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Arise and steal the storm. Arise and steal the storm. A kill and pray in Jesus' name of prayer. Amen. I'm going to talk to God. The Bible says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The Bible says, He shall hide me in his pavilion. There's a place of safety in God. Psalm 91 said, I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I know God is your covering, but the psalmist still said, I will say it. There's a place of saying to be under perpetual safety. Everybody knows that God keeps, God protects. But why are people still wasted? Until you say it, you cannot realize it. There's a place of saying to stay in the place of refuge. There's a place of declaration to arrive at the place of safety. So I need to begin to declare over your house. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my stay. The Lord is my place of safety. Open your mouth and begin to declare that the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my safety. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my is my is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. Open your mouth and begin to declare that God is your safety. Begin to declare 
that God is your refuge. Begin to decree that God is your fortress. Begin to say it with authority. Begin to say it with power. Begin to say it. Begin to declare it. Adi go 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 zaza fianto kolobosh rato kambrante kelegria de kelebosh razonta lambranta kia nanunu ozuzu kia de gria. Begin to declare with authority. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to decree. Begin to declare. Begin to declare that the Lord is your refuge. The Lord is your fortress. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've always said that there's a present advantage in every disadvantage. There's opportunity in impunity. There's a provision in God for sustenance for the people of God, even during these trying times. In a time where people ate their inhabitants, where the nation, where people ate their inhabitants because of famine, God still made a covenant provision for Elijah. In a time where things are really difficult, God creates a way of escape for his people. That's why the Bible says, in famine you shall laugh. The Bible says, in famine you shall be satisfied. So you're going to talk to God like we did the last time we met on here. Oh Lord, open my eyes to the advantage in this disadvantage. Oh Lord, open my eyes to the sustenance you have for me. Open my eyes, oh God, to the advantage in this disadvantage. Open my eyes to the special sustenance package you have for me. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my ears. Give me direction that will lead to my seasons of distinction. Open my eyes, open my ears. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, give me direction that will lead to my seasons of distinction. Give me direction. That will lead to my seasons of distinction. Open my eyes, O God. O Zika Yanika Limbronzo Zozo Gidian de Gelebosh. Open my eyes, O God. 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 Elina Hulwa Nakia Zuzu. Amplato Zagia and the Gili Hatokia. It did the Gia Zuzu Gia de Gelebosh. Matuka Yan de Gelebosh. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Hallelujah. 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 Open my eyes, O God, in the precious name of Jesus. Ketula abraso sikianagish. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says as they move from city to city. He suffered no one to do them harm. He reproved kings for their sake, mm -hmm. saying, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yes, There's mystery behind the anointed of God. When the oil of his anointing touches your head, you are kept under a supernatural covering. Mm -hmm. By the oil of his grace, I tell you, no evil will know your dwelling. Mm -hmm. He said, He rebuked rebu rebu kings for their sake, saying, Touch not. No disease touched an Israelite. No disease. Three million people, no disease. God is still the same. You are going to talk to God. Engrave upon my head <laughs> the seal of divine ownership in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Engrave upon my head, O oh God, the seal of divine ownership. Engrave upon my head the mark of touch not. Engrave upon my children, Litna Kusa Praanta Kilagia, the seal of divine ownership will be your mouth and talk to God. Engrave upon my forehead, the mark of touch not. Engrave upon my spouse, the seal of divine ownership. Engrave up upon everyone watching online right now, the seal of divine ownership. Engrave the mark of touch not. Engrave upon our children, the seal of divine ownership. Engrave upon us, the mark of touch not. Engrave, engrave, engrave. Engrave Matukaka e degele bo shanta li hatu kiana nunu. Engrave upon us the mark of touch none. Engrave upon us the seal of divine ownership. Engrave, 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 engrave. Motutuka azozozi e gedegri oroma to kali ambraha so 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 so. Engrave, oh God, upon my head, upon the head of my loved ones, upon the head of the body of Christ at large. Upon the head of every member of powerhouse, 
upon the head of everyone watching on here, and gave upon our head the mark of touch not, and gave upon our head the seal of divine ownership. Madudu, Kartizan Paharu Hante Kia Lakush, Razo Zakia Dagila Mutu, Oguriana Nina Kiala Susu, Oriana and Great in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shut down, shops are locked. People cannot even sell and buy it as they should. You know, there is a state of emergency. People are shutting. They say they have made provision for sustainers. I don't know how people that are in shutdown will be able to go to where the supplies are. I need you to talk to God. Because the Bible said that when Elijah was commanded to go to the brook of charity, God said, I have commanded <laughs> the ravens to feed you. Ravens are ravenous birds. But when God commands even the devil obeys. They bear the food in their mouth night and day to make sure Elijah is sustained. The God of the New Testament is more benevolent than the God of the Old. That was why he fed 5,000 people minus women and children and they have 12 baskets full left over. There's a covenant provision for your sustenance at these difficult times and until you know it, you cannot appropriate it. You are going to talk to God. Oh Lord my God, oh Lord my command, God. Those command, command those that are carrying my blessing to locate me. Everyone carry my blessing in their mouth. Locate me. I, I decree. Everyone commanded by God. Locate my address. Command the blessing of God over your house. Oh my God. Command the blessing of God over your family. Command the blessing of God over the works of your hand. Command the blessing of God at this uncertain times. Oh Lord, I command your blessings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I command your blessing over my household. I decree my storehouse shall not be empty. I decree my bank account shall not be empty. I decree I will not beg for bread. I decree I will not beg in harvest. Command your blessing over my house. Command your blessing over my family. Command your blessing over my household. Open your mouth and talk to God. Command your blessing, O 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 God. Rita Kuru Anna Nunu Kali Ambrasu Susu Kaya Anini. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Command the blessing. Speak to your storehouse. Speak. Let there be a release of rain. Elisha said there shall be no rain nor dew. Yet the valley shall be full of water. You don't need to know how God would do it. You just need to declare it. If the birds flying in the air, they don't sow, they don't reap. Yet God sustained them. How much more you? You are of what more you have much more value than sparrows. Oh Lord, let there be miraculous provision. Let there be miraculous provision. Let there be no dew or rain. Let the, my valley be full of water. Let those that are commanded locate my house. Command your blessing, O oh God. Command your blessing, O oh God. Command your blessing, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, dear Bube, Idio Mimi, Ibua Fana Omega Mo, Oyomo Ipazu, Nemalite no Bubu, Yaka Gymnasi Ibu Chimo. Idie bube, Idie bube, Idio mimi, Ibu afana no me gamo, Oemo ipazu, Ni malite no bubu, Yaka gymnasi Ibu. And someone under the sound of my voice, you are down to your last. I see supplies locating your house before the close of day. And someone under the sound of my voice, you don't know the way forward. I see supplies locating your house before the close of the day. 
Arima Kurante Zegria. There's someone under the sound of my voice. You don't even know where the next meal is coming from. Everyone is sending the rain of supply. Oh my God. I see a miracle alert locating your handset. I see favor finding you. I see the God of supernatural supply visiting you. I see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of stupendous plenty. The God of supernatural supply locating your house, locating your address, sustaining your family. Hear me, you will not beg. Hear me, you will not borrow. Hear me, the mysterious hand of God will sustain you during these striving, difficult times in the precious name of Jesus Christ. It shall be obvious that you serve a living God. I decree the rain of blessings locate your house, the rain of abundance locate your address, the rain of favor ha, soaks your destiny. In the precious name of Jesus. In Anunu, Satuka Yiga Libra also so so. You are worthy of my friends. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. Oh, 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 you are worthy of my praise. I want to give you a prophetic instruction. The Bible says, by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, Israel was preserved. I want to give you a prophetic instruction that will really, really help. I want everyone under the sound of my voice or watching this video at any time to retire to praise at these uncertain times. When everything fails, praise prevails. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 67, verse 5 to 7, it said, Let the people praise thee, and let all the people praise thee. So let the people praise thee, then shall the earth yield an increase, and God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let's return to praise. In praise is the miracle of your sustenance. Retire to gratitude, retire to praise as a lifestyle. And your sustenance will remain a mystery to all around you. Retire to praising God. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go back into the secret place. Dance to Him. Appreciate Him in advance. And you discover that the flow will not cease. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We celebrate you from here in Canada. We celebrate you world over. We celebrate you from the ends of the earth. We are grateful for your preservation. We are grateful for your mercy. We are grateful for your compassion. We are grateful for your faithfulness. We are grateful for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As we proceed into your word, Lord, speak a word in season. Lord, speak a word in season. Speak to lives. Speak to cases. Speak to situation. Speak to destinies. Oh, Lord, as we retire to your word, challenge us, change us, transform us. As we go into the anointing service, oh Lord, mark your people with the mark of preservation, with the mark of favor, with the mark of promotion in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Show yourself strong. Let your word have free course. Let the, your word speak to every situation. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we say thank you. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name. I greet everyone that is online right now. And um, I bless God for your life. And um, I appreciate you joining us here. I bring you greetings from Toronto, Canada. And, um, and I say good morning to everybody. And speaking to everyone connected to us, I declare with authority, your life will never remain the same. Amen. The God that is too faithful to fail will not fail us individually and collectively during this season in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your life will experience amazing testimonies. Amen. Your life will never remain the same Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll be bringing a word to us today, but I would like you to arm yourself with your bottle of oil as I've armed myself already. Let your oil be ready because after this message, we are going to anoint ourselves from wherever we are 
So it's not just a regular meeting, it's our monthly anointing and breakthrough service. And uh, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a city and a town without walls. So social distancing, the law of the state, and the uncertainty of the world cannot stop us from fellowshipping. Thanking God for the technology of our time. Though we are miles apart, but in the realm of the spirit, we are connected by faith. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. And I know someone under the sound of my voice, the hand of the Lord will change your story. The hand of the Lord will touch your life. The hand of the Lord will cause your laughter to endure. Amen. Your laughter will last Amen. as the Lord God of heaven live it. I would like us to, to take our text from the book of Ezekiel chapter 9 verses 4 to 11. I'll be speaking to us today on what I call the mark of exemption. The mark of exemption. Is there an exemption for the children of God? Or, we, or are we expected to experience what the world is expect, experiencing? Are we expected to feel what the world feels? Or does God have an exempted, exemption package for his children? These are the things we hope to find out in today's teaching. Does God have a special package for you? Are you special enough to be protected by the God that is more than enough? Are you special enough to be sustained by the El Shaddai? Does God have a special place for you? That the devil cannot get to. Is there a preservation for your destiny? We need to share this on this platform. Interestingly, a lot of news about the effectiveness, the, deli the, the, the delicateness of the virus is spread world over. But a very few people speak about the covering and the protection that is in grace and the God we serve. And that are, those are the things we would like to share. We want to, sh want to spread faith and not fear. Because as fear attracts the devil, faith attracts God. It was Smith Wigglesworth that said, when a man is in faith, God will pass 10,000 people to get to you. There's power in what you believe. And like I said earlier, what you don't want, you don't watch. What you don't resist has a right to remain. Your life will never remain the same. So tell me quickly as I read with you from the book of Ezekiel chapter 9. Ezekiel 9. Verse 4 to 11. And the Lord God said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark. Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark. Yeah. And somebody say a mark. Go to the midst of the city, the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. I want you to hold it there. God sent an angel to mark certain individuals. Who are the individuals the angel was sent to mark? He was sent to mark the head of those that sigh and those that cry. Someone was saying, why should we pray? This is a disease we need to handle it. I'm not asking you not to observe all the laws of hygiene. But as believers, we must understand we must not be carnally minded. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. As believers, we must understand that we are essentially a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. We must realize that we are spirit beings in a physical world. As Christians, we must understand it is the supernatural that controls the natural. The Bible says, <laughs> the carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually designed. As believers, we must realize that we must take over in the realm of the spirit to realize our expectation in the physical. He said, go through the midst of the city. Go through Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of those that sigh and cry. Those that sigh in the place of prayer. Those that Reprove the world of sin. Those that cry against iniquity. Those that go on their knees to pray. He said, go into the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon those people. The Bible says, I have made you a watchman over the city of Jerusalem. He said, don't hold your peace day or night. In the book of Isaiah, he said, there will be restless until Zion becomes a praise on earth. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer to all nations. So, those that sigh in the place of prayer, those that go on their knees and speak against the stronghold of wickedness, those that go on their knees and speak against 
corruption, those that go on their knees and speak against sexual perversion, those that go on their knees and challenge the world of iniquity, God said, go into Jerusalem and put a mark upon them. I want you to understand that as believers, we need to stand for something. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. He said, go into the city. In the midst of Jerusalem, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that cry out for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. I've seen believers that are not doing ab abominations, but they are secretly excited when they see iniquity trial. I've seen believers that they don't necessarily into certain things, but they are, they are delighted when they see people expressing those things. The Bible says that those that cry against it, those that say enough of the killing of Christians, those that claim that enough of corruption, those that cry in the place of prayer, that enough of bad leadership. The Bible says, set a mark on them. Set a mark on them. It's interesting to note that uh, affliction does not know your status or your title. You can be a political champion if you jump on your forehead. It reminds me of the case of Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He was the captain with many people. Leprosy was on his head. You must realize that uh, <laughs> death does not distinguish. It's a price everybody must pay. And look at what is happening the world over now. The wives of presidents, the presidents themselves, they are testing positive. God is not a respecter of persons. It is only the principles you keep in grace that makes you a principal in life. Acts 10, 34, say, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons. In every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is acceptable with him, is accepted with him. God does not respect people. He only respects the principles we keep. Psalm 74, verse 20 said, Have respect unto the covenant, O God, for the dark places of the earth is full of the habitation of cruelty. When the angel that was to mark people for preservation came, the angel was looking for those that kept the covenant. He said, Go into the midst of the city. And set a mark upon the foreheads of men that sigh, men that cry, men that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. Hey, I've seen world over nations that have forgotten that God existed during the time of this plague. They have lifted up their hands to worship. I'm not excited that people are dying. I'm not rejoicing in the death of anybody, but I'm saying that the world needed to be altered. The world needed to be altered for people to wake up. I realize that man will always be man and God will always be God. <laughs> one plague, just one plague, the nations of the world stood still. One plague, presidents took dressing. One plague, hi -ya -ya -ya. the reality of the gospel is done on anybody. He said, We look to the skies. Where would you look before? Only God can bring lasting solution. And until we realize we trace our step and make adjustment, a world that believes they don't need God will soon realize that. Without God, they will, they, will, they, will not, they will not exist. May God give us understanding Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said in verse 5, Say unto others, he said in my hearing, Go ye after them through the city and smite. Now, those that were not marked were smitten. So it's either you are marked or you become the mark. He said, And to others that are not marked, Go ye after them through the city and smite them. Let not your eyes spear, neither have ye pity. He says, Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come, near and come not near any man who is the mark. He says, Slay both utterly old and young. Corona has no respect for your age. No one is actually too young to die. Corona has no respect for your status. You can be the empire, the political president, the vice superintendent. You can be anything. There's no respect for you. The only thing plagues and disease respect is the mark. They don't respect your tribe. They don't respect your immune system. They don't respect the color of your skin. They don't respect the civilization of your country. The only thing they respect is the mark. And speaking to someone under the sound of my voice, the mark of Christ will rest upon your forehead. Amen. The mark of Christ will rest upon your forehead. The mark of Christ will rest upon your forehead. The mark of Christ will rest upon your forehead. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. He said now, but come, but don't come near any man upon is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Begin at my sanctuary. Begin at my sanctuary. Interestingly, the house of God is where every kind of person is accommodated. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's why a Christian doesn't really exempt you from diseases. It doesn't exempt you from calamity. What exempts you is the mark. The mark of redemption. 
the seal of divine ownership, the mark of his cross, the mark of the blood. That is the only thing that exempts you, that guarantees your protection. Not that you have Theophilus as your Christian name, or they call you uh, Peter, or they call you Bartholomew. It's inconsequential. What exempts you is the mark, is the mark of exemption. I speak to someone as we go into the anointing today, God will engrave upon you the seal of divine ownership Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. He says, Slay utterly the young and the old. He said, Then began and begin at my sanctuary. Then they that began at the ancient men which were before the house. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. They said that older people are more vulnerable to the plague. When God gave me this scripture, I believe it's very, very prof prophetic. Older people. He said, then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. The plague. Now, older people are more vulnerable. I'm speaking to someone under the sound of my mind. Your loved ones and your elderly. During these trying times, they shall not be lost. Amen. Even after this service, take the oil you're about to consecrate. Go back to them and mark them with the mark of preservation. It's a prophetic instruction. And you will enjoy your own reward. You will see your own reward in Jesus' name. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slain that I was left, that I fell upon my face and cried. and said, Lord, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the point out of thy fury to Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood. And the city is full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. This speaks about what is happening in the world today. People will be killed, and no one will question them. Christian relics will be wasted, and there will be no one to challenge authority. The blood of believers have watered the ground. It is enough for God to react. That is the truth. Except you don't want to be realistic. He said here that, Their iniquity is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood. The city is full of perverseness. I've never seen a generation as perverse as this generation. It's a doggish generation. Everything goes. People will sleep with other people's husbands, and I say, what's the big deal? Men with men, women with women, women with an animals, men with all kinds of perversion, bestiality. And God said, because of my fury, I am angry. And I'll fill the city with blood. The Lord has forsaken the earth and the Lord said not. Look, the eyes of God runs to and fro. He sees and he knows. And I decree for someone under the sound of my voice, grace to repent. Grace. Grace. Grace to be preserved false upon you in Jesus' name. Verse 10 says, And for me also my eyes shall not spare. Neither shall, will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink on by his side, reported the matter saying i have done as thou hast commanded and speaking to someone under the sound of my voice when the angel of preservation shall be sent your head shall be marked Amen. in the name of jesus christ when the angel of preservation shall be sent your household and everyone connected to you for good shall be marked for preservation Amen. and speaking to someone under the sound of my voice everyone connected to you for good and for grace i decree the angel of preservation will mark them with the oil of preservation in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You will mark them with the oil of preservation in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A mark means a spot. A mark, as it were, means an impression, an imprint. It means an incision, a cut. It represents a signature. A mark represents a seal. A mark represents a symbol, and sometimes it's a symbol of identity. Just like uh, the famous uh, brand of shoes called Nike, there's a mark on it. That anywhere you see it, you'll be able to say that, ah, this is Nike shoes. There's a mark on certain shoes. Oh, okay, this is Adidas. Oh, this is Reebok. They have a mark, a signature, that makes the world know it is, uh, it is, it is their product. Every believer ought to have a mark. That when you are seen, before you speak, people will know that you are a believer. A believer should not introduce himself. His actions should tell the world that he is indeed a Christian. Marks are crucial because mark or symbols, they are our identity. Marks or symbol, our identity. I come from a nation called Nigeria and we have over 150 tribes. 
And interestingly, when you meet certain people, like people from where I come from, which is on those states, they have a big mark on their face like this, like number 11. When you see them, you say, wow, this is an Ondoma. That mark reveals their identity. It reveals their tribe. It's only natural for someone that is from Ondo town to help that kind of person because he has the mark of the town. When you meet an Oyo man, you see a mark as if he has just finished fighting with a lion. You know what? When an Oyo man meets that same kind of Oyo man in a place of power, it will help him because of his mark. So mark are symbols of our identity. That anywhere we find ourselves, people can trace where we are coming from. People can know what we need. People can know what pertains to us. Interestingly, in the Bible days, when a slave is bought, that slave is marked with a seal of the person that bought it. That bought it. So therefore, anywhere the slave goes, they'll be able to say, okay, this is certain person's slave. Return this person to the house. Mark reveals identity. Mark reveals ownership. A mark can qualify you for favor or disfavor. When you are marked as a slave, anywhere you go, people begin to treat you as a slave because they can see a mark on you that this is a servant from where it's coming from. When you are marked with royalty, when you are marked with authority, anywhere you go, people will bow the knee. The Bible said that Joseph, on interpreting the, the dream of Pharaoh, Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it upon Joseph's finger. And then from today, anywhere you go, everybody bowed in it. By that ring, he marked Joseph for royalty. And everywhere Joseph went to, those that jailed him began to bow to him because it was marked. And speaking to someone here, a mark will come upon you that will distinguish you with favor, that will distinguish you with promotion, that will distinguish you with power, that will distinguish you with royalty. A mark will come upon you that will make men gather to honor you Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So, mark as symbols of identity. Mark as signatures that approve or disapprove. There are people, under the sound of my voice, you have been marked with the yoke of hardship and difficulty. It does not matter how hard you work. Favor does not find you. You labor, but there's nothing to show. Everywhere you go, you will walk, 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 but there will reward someone else. There's a mark that must be erased. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There are some people here, you have been marked with the mark of rejection. They will approve of everybody, but when it gets to your turn, they'll say, no, we are sorry. I was speaking to a particular woman. Our, our children came from the U.S. to see her to her. When she traveled 12 years ago, she claimed asylum with 12 others. She said to me, they gave 11 of them. When they got to me, they said, we have no reason to refuse you, but we just don't know why. There was a mark on her that sponsored, sponsored rejection. When the mark of rejection is upon you, you will keep experiencing repeated failure. I have been a victim of a mark of rejection until I rejected it in the place of prayers, until I rejected it in the place of dangerous sacrifices, until I rejected it in the place of prophetic action. I was refused at embassies for close to a decade. I went back to God in the prayers and he dealt with the mark. And the next interview I attended was the last interview. I speak to someone who has been experiencing the mark of rejection before now. I decree, the last time you are rejected will be the last time you will ever be rejected. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. The last time you are rejected will be the last time you will ever be rejected. The last time you are rejected will be the last time you will ever be rejected. The last time you are rejected will be the last time you will ever be rejected. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I am speaking to someone here. Every mark upon your life that is not the mark of God is erased. Is erased. Is erased. Is erased. erased. In the name of Jesus. Now you must understand that there are people under the sound of my voice that you have been marked. Mark, marks don't have to be visible. Some marks are invisible. There are people under the sound of my voice, you have been marked for repeated failure. There are people under the sound of my voice, you have been marked from your mother's womb. Some have been marked with witchcraft. Everywhere they go, people continue from where those that started with them stop. Traveling abroad does not stop people's hardship. There are people here that are in need of dangerous grace and mercy. That to change your geographical location does not frustrate the satanic bondage and battle over your life. You need to deal with it at the root. And most times, the root is a mark. The Bible says, I come to pass in that day that I will deliver you from the hard bondage wherein you have been made to serve. The Israelites were marked for 400 years until the deliverer came. I speak to someone that has been in perpetual bondage. By this declaration, you are relieved. You are, you are delivered from every satanic bondage in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we'll check some biblical examples of those that have been marked before we're going to anointing ourselves. If we look at the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 15, the Bible spoke about Cain and Abel. And Cain slew Abel out of envy and 
the acceptance of Abel's sacrifice. And after Cain slew Abel in Genesis chapter 4, verse 15, God asked him and said, Where is Abel thy brother? Is that my keeper? God said, The voice of his blood is crying unto me from the ground. And God released a curse unto him. And the curse was so much that Abel said, Ha! This curse is too much. Anyone that sees me will kill me. And God said to him that anyone that kills Cain, the curse I placed on you now, I will place it upon them sevenfold. So the mark that was on Cain was the mark to preserve his life so that he can, so that he can experience or so that he can, he can experience the curse God has released over him. That mark preserved his life, but that mark did not solve his problem. <laughs> so there are some people that they are marked for long life, but it is long life in hardship. Cain was preserved, but the ground will not yield. Cain was preserved, but nothing he does will prosper. Longevity is useless without the blessing of God. And speaking to someone that in your family, they live long, but they are always poor. I decree you will break that barrier Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Another person that was marked, in case you don't understand, is Abraham. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, And Abraham departed as God has commanded, and he moved. And when he obeyed God, God said, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. The mark that God placed upon Abraham was the mark of divine reciprocity. In other words, Abraham had a mark on him that if you do him well, men will do you well. Uh -huh. Abraham had a mark on him that if you curse him, men will curse you. Uh -huh. So Abraham was a juggernaut. You don't dare him, otherwise God dares you. Uh -huh. If you bless him, God bless you. Uh -huh. There was a mark on Abraham so strong that everywhere he went, people were careful with him. When Abimelech took Sarah, thinking that Sarah was Abraham's sister and was planning to sleep with her and marry her, God went to Abimelech and said, you are finished. <laughs> the man you took his wife, He's a prophet. He said, you are a dead man. And Abimelech said, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. There's someone here. God will be jealous over your life. Amen. Anyone that stands to hurt you, even when you are not there, God will be quick to judge them. Amen. God will be quick to judge them. Amen. God will be swift over your case. Amen. He will no longer be silent. Amen. He will fight your battle Amen. and he will preserve your destiny. Amen. He said to Abimelech, you have took, taken the wife of a prophet. He said, this man you have taken his wife, there's a mark of reciprocity on him. If you bless him, you are blessed. Uh -huh. If you curse him, you are cursed. Uh -huh. He said, be careful to return his wife and let him pray for you. All of you are smitten. Ha. There was a mark on Abraham that everyone was careful. When he steps into a, an, a community or a land, everyone quivers. It will shake the economy. It will become the think tank of the town. And everyone that does well to him, God does well to them. Uh -huh. Every believer has that mark. And you must realize it's going to be activated today. Whomever bless you is blessed. Amen. Whomever causes you is cursed. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number three. According to Exodus chapter 12, verse 22 to 23, there was a mark on Israel. The Bible said, God said, after God has smitten Egypt with all his wonders, and Pharaoh did not let them go, God said, there's another one, the last one. He said, when this one shows up, he will let you go in a hurry. He said, kill a lamb. Put his up in the blood. Mark your lintel and your posts. There's a mark that came upon Israel in Egypt that preserved them from the angel of death. The angel of death is sweeping world over, but there's preservation for children of God. Amen. The Bible said that we are a Goshen in Egypt. When darkness was upon Egypt, Goshen had lights. There's an exempted package for, exemption package for Christians, and we must wake up to appropriate it. We must wake up to realize it. We must wake up to step into it. And everyone that took the blood and marked their lintel and the pros, when the angel of death was passing, he saw the blood and passed over. As you take this oil after this meeting to mark your life, to mark your head and mark your doors, I decree the angel of death will not know your house. Amen. When someone carrying the plague knocks on your door, the plague will wait for them outside. The plague will wait for them outside because your house has been marked with the oil of exemption. You shall be exempted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you also look at the case of Jacob, I wanted to add that example. The Holy Spirit is bringing it to me now. The case of Jacob, when he left Laban and ran with his family, Laban woke up to realize that Jacob has gone for three days and he took up his children, armed himself with a sword and pursued after them because he wanted to take revenge. But because there was a mark on Jacob, hallelujah. Amen. 
the mark of on Jacob was the mark inherited from Abraham by Isaac, which was transferred to Jacob. In other words, if your grandfather is marked with poverty, you can inherit the mark. If your great grandfather is marked with prosperity, you can inherit the mark. That is why you will see some families in their lineage is poverty, and some families in their lineage is sweatless triumph. I'm speaking to someone, every inherited evil mark in your bloodline is erased over your life Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, as I said, he, he pursued out after Jacob. And a night to catch up with Jacob, the God of the mark showed up and said to him that be careful <laughs> not to speak speak either good or bad to Jacob. Because one, if you speak good, you'll be blessed and you don't deserve it. If you speak bad, you'll be cursed. So be careful not to do anything. And when Laban caught up with Jacob, he said, it's in the power of my hand to do you hurt. But there's a mark. There's a mark. There's a mark. There's a mark upon your head that exempts you. He said, the God of the Father showed up to me. He said, I should be careful with you. I have power to hurt you. I'm here with armed men. You don't have armed men. But the God of the Father said, there's a mark on you. I'm speaking to someone. In the day of adversity, the mark of exemption will preserve you Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In 2000 and, in 2008, we just had my first daughter. She was three months old, December 24. We we're coming from a place that was 12 midnight, and the vehicle I had then was Ope Omega. That vehicle showed us the <laughs> other side. <laughs> and the vehicle broke down on Dr. Mo Bridge in the in the uh, around to 12 in the midnight. I was with my wife and my daughter. And Right there, as I opened the bonnet to fix it, two bikes came with two arm robbers sitting on them, and uh, two arm robbers on each side. And the bike turned and faced where it was coming from, and the arm robbers came down. And I accosted my wife. I went to use myself just down the road. So, and as I saw them, God said to me that these are arm robbers. And my wife was there with my daughter. So there was no way I could escape. I had money, huge amount of money to give onto somebody. I had material things in the vehicle, and I didn't know what happened. I walked up to those arm robbers. And I said, I'm not the kind of person you can rob. I didn't know what I was saying. I was speaking for about 10 minutes. And the robber said, Odamo, Ojasi, Odamo. He knows what he's doing. And they ran on, they jumped on their bike and they left me. After they left, my legs were visibly shaking. But my wife did not know. It's not about the grandma I spoke. It's about the mark. When the mark is upon your head, God will preserve your life. God will preserve your destiny. A thousand will fall and ten thousand. But grace will keep you and your household. He said that it's in the power of my hand to hurt you, Jacob. But the God of your fathers warned me. I speak to someone in the day of adversity, in this period of uncertainty, the mark will speak for your life. Amen. The mark will speak for your life. Amen. The mark will speak for your life. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 to 37, we saw the mark speaking as well. Someone stood against the nation of Israel and said, why should a lot of people die? This war does not need to end with bloodshed of everybody. Bring your champion. And we have brought our champion. The Philistines brought Goliath, but Israel had no one to show. Goliath was head and shoulder taller than everybody. The Bible spoke about the weight of his shield, his spear, his eyes, his meal, and all of that. And as he was boasting against Israel, everybody, they, they whimpered in fear. For 40 days he boasted. But the Bible said that uh, David came on the scene and said, Who is this unmarked? The word uncircumcised means unmarked. Because the covenant God gave to Abraham is the covenant of circumcision. So every Israelite had the mark of circumcision in their genital area. But the Philistines are uncircumcised because they don't know the God of Israel. So when David came on this scene and all the armies of Saul were whimpering in fear, whimpering in fear, David came with the understanding that we have been marked. And he says something. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? First Samuel 17, verse 34, 37 that defies the army of the living God. By that pronouncement, they ceased from becoming the armies of Saul, they became the armies of the living God. Uh, by the declaration of the fact that he is circumcised and marked with the mark of God, he said that he will bring down his head, and the rest is history. When the mark begins to speak for you, giants will fall. Amen. Goliaths will be beheaded. Amen. Your David will triumph and prevail. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, Amen. say to yourself, I bear, I bear the mark. Say, I bear the mark of Christ. Mark Say to yourself five times, I bear the mark of Christ. 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 Now, if you look at the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible spoke about Paul. And Paul made the declaration. He says, For let no man trouble me. He said, Because I bear in my body the marks of the Lord. I bear in my body 
the mark of the Lord. Can you boast like Paul that you bear in your body the marks of the Lord? Paul was able to boast like that because he had been persecuted. He had been flogged many times for the sake of the gospel. He had both the physical mark and the spiritual mark. So no devil could trouble him. How many of us can be persecuted for the sake of the gospel? I've seen believers that keep their identity at home. They're only Christians in church. A lot of us go to work and we hide our identity. I'm not asking you to be fanatic about your, about your, your faith, but people should know where you belong. People should know what you stand for. And like I said earlier, if you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. For someone under the sound of my voice, as the Lord God of heaven liveth, as the Lord God of heaven liveth, whose I am and whom I serve, the mark of exemption comes upon your forehead. Amen. It comes upon your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it comes upon your family. Amen. The mark of exemption comes upon you, Amen. comes upon you, Amen. comes upon you, Amen. comes upon you, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who else is the carrier of this mark? The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 20 to 22. Who else is the carrier of this mark? In 1 Chronicles 16, verse 20 to 22, it said, as they moved from city to city, he suffered no one to do them harm. Uh, it said, yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Look, you are special to God. You are more special than even Abraham because you're under a better covenant. If God told Abimelech, you are a dead man, you touch Abraham's wife. <laughs> Anyone that touches what is yours, they're dead. Amen. Anyone that bless you is blessed. Anyone that dare to curse you is cursed already. They are finished. And the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 20, 22, as they moved from city to city, he suffered no one to do them. He even reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet snow mm -hmm. and speaking to someone as this oil comes upon your head i decree you are going to be exempted from war calamity misery mischief death mm -hmm. darkness in the name of jesus christ mm -hmm. as this oil touches your head you shall be the apple of god's eyes mm -hmm. as this oil touches your head you are exempted from war Amen. As this already touches your head, what wasted others will not waste you. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How do I activate the mark? Like I used to say, a faith that waits for God to do everything is an irresponsible faith. Mm. A faith that waits for God to do everything is an irresponsible faith. In your work with God, you always have a part to play. Yes. God will not do for man what man can do for himself. How do I come under the covering of this mark? How? Number one, repentance. The message may be unpopular, but it's the truth. The Bible says, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that when the time of refreshing shall come from the Lord, you shall be a participant. Repentance is not an old message. You can't update the Bible. To repent means to turn away from sin and to turn to God. That is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, if you read the earlier verses, it says, If I shut the heaven and there be no rain, and the ground is iron and the heaven is brass, if my people that are called by my name will humble and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways. Repentance is a turning from lying to speaking the truth, a turning from stealing to go and work for what you eat, a turning from beating your wife. A turning from dangerous satanic habits that have arrested your destiny. To repent means to turn. It means to turn. A complete U-turn. It's a turning away from sin and turning to God. Until you are fully repented, you may not be exempted. Mm. Thank God you can repent now as I speak. Mm. You can repent. There's still hope. There's still opportunity. There's still a time to go back to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry about this and I'm dropping it at your feet. It is time to repent. It is time to repent. It is time to repent. Luke 13, verse 1 to 5, Jesus said, Those that are destroyed in Italy, do you think you are better? Those that are destroyed in social place, don't think you are better. Don't say we are a better nation. God said you are not better. He said, except you repent. Luke 13, verse 1 to 5. He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Not our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. To receive this mark, you must repent. Number two. You must have faith. You can't receive the mark except by faith. For example, there are people that until you lay hands on them, they don't believe in the power of the oil. 
Nobody needs to lay hands on you physically. God himself will lay hands on you. Until you receive it by faith, you don't receive it at all. The Bible says in four places in scripture, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, that the just shall live by faith. We are meant to live by faith and not by sight. Do you believe you are exempted? The word spoken to this category of people did not prosper with this category of people. Do you know why? It was not mixed with faith in them that had it. Are you going to mix this pronouncement with faith? Or you are just going to take it like that? Listen carefully. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh unto him must believe that God exists and he is a rewarder, he's not a user. Do you believe that there's a mark that can come upon your life that will preserve you? Do you believe that a thousand can fall and ten thousand and none shall come near your dwelling? That is the faith you are talking about. You must activate your faith. And when that faith is activated, it's a shield. The Bible says, taking the shield of faith, where which you are able to face all the fiery that, not a few, all plus corona. Mm. With the shield of faith, you can shake off. Mm. You can say the blood is against you. You can't know my dwelling. I speak to someone. Every fear in your heart is caused from the roots. Amen. I, I release faith like fire into your heart Amen. to prevail at this uncertain times. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You must believe. Believe in what? You must believe in God's word that says there's a mark for you. You must believe in his prophet pronouncing it over you. And you must believe in God himself. You must believe. Number three, you must take prophetic actions. You must what? Take prophetic actions like the oil. In a while now, you'll be pouring this oil on the cup. You'll be anointing yourself, anointing your children, anointing the door and the lintel of your post so that no plague shall know your dwelling. The protect prophetic actions are crucial. Number four, you must take refuge in the name of the Lord through prayers. You must take refuge in the name of the Lord through prayers. You must take refuge in the name of the Lord through prayers. There is no better time to pray than now. Some people stood and they were mocking prayers. I had a sister that had a gas explosion in the early 90s. Boom! As the gas exploded, we were still Muslim then. 91, 92. As the gas exploded, she was literally on fire. There was no one around. She shouted, Jesus, and the flame ceased. Some people will sit and play now on prayer. Now, what are we talking? Things are happening. People are going to pray. It's not prayer we need. Okay, if you know what we need, why not do it? Since you know what we need. Prayer should be the first call. After prayer, appropriate prophetic actions. Because it's in, it's in prayers that you receive direction. It's in prayers we receive direction. So we must take refuge in the name of the Lord through prayers. We must take refuge in the name of the Lord through prayers. Anyone that kneels to pray will rise to shine. Anyone that spends time with God will spend minutes with men. Anyone that tires in his presence will do exploits. Martin Luther said, I have too much to do today. That's why I must spend the first four hours of the day in prayers. Prayers always precedes performances. You will not lose your reward Amen. in the precious name of Jesus Amen. Christ. So we're moving to the anointing, but before we do that, you're under the sound of my voice. You know you need to repent. You know that there are things you are still struggling with. You know that there are habits that must die for your glory to rise. You know there are areas of concern nobody knows but God. You don't need to confess to me right there in the corner of your room. Bow your knees to God and say, Lord, have mercy. Oh, go ahead and talk to God. Have mercy upon my soul. I drop this at your feet today. I repent and I come under your covering. Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all. Look at Luke 13 verse 5. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. I come under the covering of the blood. I confess, I drop. I refuse to go back to my vomit. I break the repeated cycle of sinning today. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, take your place. Be Lord over my life. Sit over my life. Be God afresh in the name of Jesus Christ. I release all to you in Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer, I will appreciate it. If you send me a DM, a personal message, so that I can keep you in my prayers. I'm praying for you. Grace will keep you to the end. You will not fall in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Now take the oil in your hand and open it. I have an open it said, this is the oil of, exemption. the oil of exemption. I release into this oil, I release into this oil the, power of God, the power of God, the blood of Jesus, the, blood of Jesus, the authority of his word, the, authority, the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy I release Ghost. into this oil the unctions of eternity. The of eternity. I declare this oil is consecrated this oil in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I release into this oil the authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I decree as this oil comes upon my head, 
It shall be the oil of favor. Amen. It shall be the oil of exemption. Amen. It shall be the oil of preservation. Amen. It shall be. It shall be the oil of breakthrough for me. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As I anoint myself and announce my house, everyone this oil touches is preserved Amen. from calamity. Amen. Everyone this oil touches is elevated. Amen. Everyone this oil touches is healed. Amen. It's restored. Amen. This shall be the oil that reverses the irreversible. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I need you to take that oil right now and mark your forehead and also take a shot as the blood of Jesus to rejuvenate and inoculate your system. Mark your head. And say, I release upon my head the oil of exemption. And take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. At the blood of Jesus. Take it by faith. You're taking that prophetic character. I want you to begin to prophesy with your right hand on your head. Say, I engrave upon my head the seal of divine ownership. I insist my unfailing authority. My life is preserved. The life of my children is preserved. My household is preserved. In the name of Jesus, no plague shall know my dwelling. My life attracts favor. Every satanic mark is erased right now. Every mark of wickedness is erased right now. Begin to declare it. Every evil mark is erased. Every mark of wickedness is erased. Every mark over of darkness is erased by this oil i am preserved i seal upon my head the seal of divine ownership in the name of jesus christ let no man trouble me i bear in my life the mark of christ begin to confess it begin to enforce it begin to appropriate it thank you jesus begin to bring your prayers to a close begin to bring your prayers to a close begin to bring your prayers to a close to kaka kaka. In Jesus' name we pray. I pray for everyone watching right now. In the name that is above all names, your life will never remain the same. As this oil touches your head, I release by the oil of my calling, the seal of divine ownership. Because you belong to God, let no man trouble you. I decree the mark of reciprocity rests upon your head. Anyone that bless you is blessed. Anyone that costs you is cursed. By this oil, you come under the covering and the protection of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You come under the covering and the protection of the blood. Amen. By this oil, I decree, no place shall know your dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Rejection is cursed over your life. Amen. Failure is cursed over your life. Circle of repeated failure is cursed over your life. Amen. Agenda of wickedness is cursed over your life. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Alleluia. Lord, we give you glory. Alleluia. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before we bring this meeting to a close, as um, I'd like to mention a few things. Come April, we are fasting as a people because when times are hard, it's the time to return to God. As the R58 says, is this not the fast I have chosen to lose the band of wickedness and let the oppressed go free? Fasting April 1 to April 21, one meal a day. And also, we'll also be keeping physically fit. You can take water throughout the day. You can take water at any time, but it's one meal a day throughout April 1 to 21. And I'll be posting my daily activities on all my social handles. So if you have not followed me, you can follow on Facebook. You can also follow on Instagram, abiodu underscore on Instagram. Uh, the activities of the day will be posted. You can be a part of that as well. You know, so let us prepare ourselves for April. We're returning to God in prayers. We're repenting in sackcloth and ashes. So that God will have mercy and heal and heal our land. And also 21 days in April, I shall be having a fourth watch Nigerian time, 12 midnight to 1, every night in April, 12 midnight to 1 a.m. I'll be on here prayers alone. Uh, weekly activities, Wednesdays, uh, impact hour and Sunday services will still continue online. But every day in April for one hour, we will be praying. Breakthrough prayers, preservation prayers. Your life will never, 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 never remain the same. You are here and um, you are one of us or you have been blessed by the administration and you want to give your tithe and your offering, your tithe and your offering to the church. I'm going to post the account of the church. I'm going to call it out. I'm going to post it. It's Powerhouse Apostolic International Ministry, UBA. Powerhouse Apostolic International Ministry, UBA. The account number is 101. Eight nine five zero eight seven five. I'll call that again. One zero one eight nine five zero eight seven five. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Hallelujah. The Lord cause His countenance to shine upon you. Amen.
The Lord gives you peace. Amen. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord keep you. Amen. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. Amen. The Lord gives you peace. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I decree no one will sorrow in your household. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No one will sorrow Amen. in your household. Amen. I decree this season you will not beg for bread. Amen. Grace will sustain you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your life will sing a new song. Amen. And you personally, your laughter will endure. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is well with you. Hallelujah. It is well with your family. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you like to give your offering and your tithe, I, I, as you dedicate what you're about to give to God in your heart, I decree your offering is consecrated, Amen. your tithe is received, Amen. everyone will smile over your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you will not beg in harvest. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. your devourers are rebuked for your sake. Amen. Everywhere you turn, favor will find you. Amen. Favor will find you. Amen. Favor will find you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Men will give unto your bosom. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We pray for this online community watching right now that life will never remain the same. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Lord, we give you praise. Thank Hallelujah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say to yourself, I am an entity of dominion. I'm an entity of dominion. I walk in power. I walk in power. I rule in power. I rule in power. I reign in power. I reign in power. Settled forever. Amen. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.